But isn't it funny to be living in a country where this sort of thing happens? Well, absolutely. I mean, it wasn't as bad as this in the war time, let alone now. <laughs> you remember that, do you? I do. Well, yeah. Yes, I was there. <laughs> I was only young, mind, but... Uh, and I've there was, never been there was on a demonstration before, so I don't know. <laughs> no, never. In all my life. <laughs> absolutely fed up with the lies this government is yes. telling yes. and the fact that this is becoming a Nazi state and the government is destroying this company, country and it's destroying businesses and it is bringing the country to its knees for Agenda 21, 22, 21, 30 and for the World Economic Forum. And these people cannot see what's happening. It's going to affect them as well. Yeah, but you're protesting in the middle of a lockdown. You shouldn't be no, doing that. No, it's illegal. The whole lockdown is illegal. The figures were absolutely... They were true. And they've admitted the, the figures were true. They talked about 4,000 deaths, never in this life. They're using a communist behavioural therapist to actually control everybody. Who's that? Susan Nietzsche. Communist, card-carrying Where do you think this is all heading? I think it's going to head for the government being arrested. And I hope... Boris Johnson is arrested for treason and anybody else, Chris Whitty, the lot, should be arrested for treason. I've actually put a letter in the Australian News and Journal about that. The Nazi regime started very benign. The communist uh, system in Germany, uh, the same. And then, you know, hostile environment. Yeah, was one slogans everywhere. Fear. And then you have the people and then you can do the next thing and the next thing. That's why I think this is the beginning. The um, imposition on our freedom, on our civil rights. But they will say, won't they, that they're actually trying to protect us from a, what is a potentially deadly virus. Yes, well, is that really so? Is that really a deadly virus in the sense that it is any worse than other epidemics that we have had? That's a big question. The WHO has declared before the first lockdown that this is not a pandemic. Yeah? I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but we have plenty of viruses about, don't we? All the time. Okay, so where's all this heading, do you think? <laughs> Good question. And my feeling is that it is heading towards a dictatorship, tyranny, of a medical kind that we've not had before in the world, a medical dictatorship. You see that you're not allowed to do certain things because you are a danger to others, a perceived danger to others, because you might carry a virus. Much of the mainstream press is just telling us all the time, you must obey the government, the government is right. Well, you w would be able to answer that more because you have researched that. I mean, the, the World Economic, uh, what is it called? World the Economic Forum. Forum. They, uh, they've got a lot of material out there. On the website, yeah. on their website. And the Rockefeller Foundation Sustainable Development Plan actually describes in quite some detail about exactly. what their hope and plan is. So it's a little bit more than just a theory. Maybe it's a conspiracy, but it's more than a theory. Okay, so uh, what, what are they planning, in, in a nutshell? To have um, control and full surveillance over the, po the population of the world, and to introduce what they call the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which involves um, the Internet of Things. It involves a lot more um, artificial intelligence, and, uh, and then... And then such things as developing the smart city and therefore also a rewilding of the countryside. So it's quite a fundamental change so that everybody will be nicely in their, in their places um, and obedient. We're basically in the countryside in Stroud. That's yeah? right. That's right. I mean, that's, that's certain, certainly the case. Is that there's quite a movement for rewilding, which on one level is perfectly fine and it's, it's very necessary to have natural habitats. But when it comes to exclude human beings in it, that is then something else. We need to have a farming system, for instance, that really includes nature and you work with nature. Because, because if, if you have half of the countryside rewilded, that means that a certain amount is going to be very intensively farmed to feed the population. And that's what we need to get away from. We need to integrate human beings in the landscape 
We sort of organically, without using all these toxins which are destroying wildlife and destroying nature, so that, so that we can then have healthy food being produced in harmony with nature. Well, that sounds like a much better world. What's the chance of that happening, do you think? Well, I have to somewhere believe that we will get that, that the good will prevail, otherwise I would give up now, <laughs> you know. But basically I think the issue is our freedom, and by freedom I don't mean just doing what I want to do, but really living in harmony with other human beings and with nature, and to have freedom of movement, freedom of speech, freedom of interaction with whoever I want to interact, without fear. What do you think about what you've seen here today, though? Well, I was encouraged that a little town like Stroud had such a good turnout. Uh, I was uh, encouraged about that. I was very um, taken aback by what happened later on, that people were arrested for, for something that um, I couldn't see why, for speaking up, for, you know, speaking what is important to them. And that has triggered something in me in terms of what I know from Germany. You know, I mean, obviously I wasn't around in the Nazi time, but that was my parents' um, generation. But I witnessed um, the GDR system, the communist system, as a visitor, because all our relatives lived in, in the GDR. And as a child, we visited them every summer holidays. That's East Germany, old East Germany, before oh, the war came down. That's right, yeah. And I remember my grandmother coming into the garden and saying, be careful what you say, the neighbors might overhear this. You know, that kind of thing. I remember the soldiers with machine guns when we crossed the border. We were searched for four hours often in, in the heat. And um, this is what I remember. And so, you know, something like this that's happening, uh, of course, brings back those memories as well. You know, the, the pain it caused in our family. But most of our family lived in the GDR and we could be with them and they were not allowed to visit us. We've got a similar thing going on in our care homes, haven't we, with elderly Absolutely. relatives? Absolutely. Mm. And to me that's criminal. You know, I have a friend whose husband has Parkinson's, is in a care home. She's been able to see him twice, not allowed to touch him, not allowed to be with him on her own. We are talking about a married couple. There's always a member of staff present. She has to be wrapped in plastic and sanitized, but even then she's not allowed to touch him. What is that? What is that? Is that human? You know, I know them both personally since many years and they are a very loving, close couple who cannot be together now. Okay, so that's uh, my little vox pop from uh, Stroud last Saturday uh, from the protest, the um, vox pop that the BBC didn't seem to uh, want to do. Uh, what about this whole business of care homes? Because she finishes talking about that, um, Delia. You know, this is something which is very strange. We've never had this sort of thing before where you're not allowed, for example, to touch your loved ones. Um, well, on one of the... Or even to see them, actually. Yeah. Yes, on one of the protests that I went to in London, I ended up chatting to an end-of-life nurse who'd actually left her job because of the horrific things that she'd seen in the care home. And she told me that during the height in inverted commas, of the pandemic. Um, because doctors weren't allowed to go into the care homes or they didn't go in, there was unqualified people giving reasons for death on the death certificates um, and COVID-19 was put down when there was no evidence. There wasn't even a test in those days as well. Um, and also later on, she was saying there was things she couldn't talk about because she was too emotional, obviously. But she was saying later on when the test was available, she was taking the test on Monday, but there was no results till Wednesday. But during that time, she was still allowed to work and mix with the people in the care home. And she was saying that it was inhumane that the families weren't allowed to come and see 
their relatives and if they were they had to wear masks and stand behind a plastic screen and she just found it too distressing to see these poor people who were suffering dementia anyway are confused not being able to see their families and she just had to leave because it was too heartbreaking for her so what's happening at the moment um, what has been happening is it's um it's basically genocide um getting rid of old people it's inhumane and it is absolutely disgusting. You're killing people not just by not giving them medical care, but by depriving them or of seeing human contact. Lo- human contact, but particularly depriving, excuse me, depriving them from of seeing um, their loved ones during very difficult times for many, many months. I they think deteriorate that, yeah, very so fast. So, for example, elderly people and people with dementia actually seeing somebody from their family can be the only thing that's keeping them going yeah. at all. And this is intentional. I believe this is intentional because yeah. they, 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 they the, the thinking heads, the thinking heads who come up with diab- the diabolical impositions on us and restrictions know that human contact is probably the most important thing for us 